In this video, we're going to talk about what it looks like when a limit does not exist. So I want to give some pictures of these DNE does not exist limits. All right, so I'm going to draw some axes for this first picture, and I'm going to put one on the x axis. And let's have my graph kind of go upwards like this and have an open circle here. And let's say that this y value at that hole is four. And then it sort of picks up from this hole down here at a y value of two. And then it drops down and continues down like that. So in that picture, let's talk about the limit as x approaches one of f of x and what that limit is. So remember, as we talked about at the end of the last video, if our function f of x, if the y values don't approach just one finite number as x approaches a, then that's when our limit does not exist. So in this picture, from the left, the y values seem to be getting really, really close to 4. So from this side, the y values get really, really close to 4. And then from the other side, from the right side of 1, the y values seem to get really, really close to 2. So this limit is d and e, and let's write that reason. So the reason, we already said it in words, but it's because as x approaches 1, f of x, which means my y values, my outputs, f of x approaches 2. f of x approaches 2 values. It approaches 4 and 2. Let's write that better. 4 and 2. Not just one value, like I need it to. All right, let's look at another picture where we'll have a D and E limit. Let me draw my axes. In fact, let me just draw some axes in all of these. All right, and in the second picture, I'll label negative 2 on the x-axis and put a vertical asymptote there and have my function kind of go up to the vertical asymptote on this side. And then the other side, I'll have it also go up to the vertical asymptote here and then away from the vertical asymptote it does whatever alrighty and then well in this picture let's talk about what the limit is as x approaches negative 2 alrighty and it turns out here as well this limit is going to be d and e and the reason The reason is, as x approaches negative 2, f of x, our outputs, or our va y values, this does not, f of x does not approach a finite number. It needs to be approaching a single finite number for the limit to exist. Okay, and we had, remember, we had said that up above in the previous video, the limit that needs to be a single finite number. That's not happening here. Okay. In this scenario, when the limit from, as we get close to whatever x is approaching, here x is approaching negative 2, if the y values either get really, really huge and are sort of going to infinity, or if they get really, really small and go to negative infinity, then we need to specify that. So we actually are going to write, we're going to be a little bit more specific than just saying D and E. We're going to write that the limit as x approaches negative 2 of f of x equals infinity. So that is actually how we'll write this answer. But that technically is a subcategory of DNE. So when I write that this limit is infinity, this means it means two things. It means the limit as x approaches negative 2 of f of x does not exist, DNE, because this is not a finite number. And it means one other thing. When I write that infinity, it's telling me more information about the y values and what they're approaching. The y values are getting infinitely large. They're getting infinitely large as x gets really, really close to negative 2. So when I have a DNE limit like this, if I can specify that, oh, the y values are getting really, really big and going to infinity, I should specify that. 
And similarly, if they were going to negative infinity, getting really, really small, I would need to specify that. All right, and I'm gonna give one final example. So this is gonna be a specific function, f of x equals sine of one over x. So the graph of this is kind of similar to a sine type function in that it oscillates. So it'll be oscillating, but as you get closer and closer to the origin, the oscillation gets quicker and quicker and quicker. And even from the other side, starts off wide, and as you get closer and closer to the origin, it gets quicker and quicker and quicker. So something like that. So let's talk about the limit as x approaches zero of this function. This limit is also going to be d and e. And this one's d and e because the reason is that as x gets close to zero, f of x, my y values or my outputs, now approaches, remember that for a sine function, the smallest the y value gets is negative one, the biggest the y values are getting is one. This function is approaching every number in the interval from negative one to one. As you get super, super close to zero, it's sort of getting really close to all of those numbers in that, in that interval. So it's not just approaching a single finite number, which means the limit does not exist.